why don't we take uh, everybody through a, a real world certifier test, Joe? That's a good idea, Daryl. Now we have the certifier has just been turned on. Now I could have turned on the backlight, but since this is a well lit room, we'll, we'll just uh, look at the screen without the backlight. It asks us if we want to test cables or uh, network ports or review printer memory. So let's t uh, uh, test cables. Now our first choice here is we want to do a real world certify or a basic cable test. Now the, our basic cable test, uh, we do everything everybody else does, split pairs, opens, shorts. But in addition, we also do distance to split pairs. In other words, if there's a split pair in the cable, we can help you uh, find out where it is and uh, repair that uh, cable. Now, when we go to Real World Certify, it does all of the basic cable tests, plus it also tests uh, crosstalk, and it tests the uh, cable type, and allows us to predict the speed that the cable is going to run at. Uh -huh. So here we go, real world certify. It tells us to uncoil the cable. Now the tester can actually tell if the cable is co coiled or not, because if it's coiled, there's more crosstalk, and it uh, makes the uh, uh, cable category be a little less than it really is. You know, here's the really the first big why in the road where we are different than the other guys, isn't it? Because how many cable installers use that last 20 feet as a coil? stuffed in the wall, maybe with a tie wrap around it. We'll show you the difference in the performance of your cable if you use techniques like that. And it really makes you a better installer when you have a tool like this. Right. And, you know, coiling the cable was probably all right for a 100 megabit network. But when you get to the gigabit, uh, where performance is more critical. <laughs> now we're going to plug in the cable. It tells us to plug into the left port. And we press... More of, the, more of the test. Now it asks us if it's a patch cable or a solid cable. The solid uh, cables are the ones normally found in the wall and the patch cables are the ones that uh, uh, connect from the wall outlet to the equipment which may be a PC or, or a switch or a hub. And you had a nice way of figuring out whether you were dealing with a patch cable or not. Uh, with the magnifying glass, right? If you saw a stranded cable, it's a patch cable. Yeah, that's very nice about these connectors. You can just look at them, and uh, you can see the end of the wires. Yeah. And I just use a little magnifying glass, and I can look at them and know right away. And also, you can pretty much tell by, by how, how flexible the wire is. So it is a patch cable if it's flexible. All right, so now we tell it's a patch cable. And it begins the test. First, it uh, tests for split pairs. Then it tests the next, which is near end crosstalk. Mm -hmm. Then it tests the effects, which is the far end crosstalk. And uh, we do these tests digitally, so it's moving right along. And now we're testing for the speed of the capability of each of the pairs. So that, now that that's complete, it tells us to plug in the probe at the far end of the cable. And it tells us that the red light will come on when the test is done. Now, we happen to have the far end of the cable is right here, but this could be in a wiring closet some distance away, and you may have to be able to find that cable. So the first thing we do is that we've placed a tone on the cable to help us lo locate it in the wiring closet. Mm -hmm. And then once we've uh, uh, located the cable, now this, this uh, auto, audio probe is also the uh, test fixture for the far end of the cable. And the little red light has come on to tell us that the test is complete. And it also tells us the straight through cable. Now that that test is done, we can unplug the uh, probe. You know, Joe, I can't tell you how many calls I get with people uh, thanking us for putting that red lead there. Because they walk to the far end of the building. And if it wasn't for the red lead, they'd have to leave the remote there, walk all the way back to the main unit, see if the test was done. Here we tell them, right there in the remote area. The test is done. Simply unplug it, stick it in your pocket, and come back to the main unit. Well, that's where we've been very lucky. We've had a lot of customer uh, input because, you know, the customers realize that we're trying to uh, create a very cost-effective piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. And they've been uh, uh, very good to help us uh, make these little features 
that have made a big difference to them. Sure. Because then it's all about time. How do I save my time? How do I get the best out of my time? Yeah. So that was a suggestion from a customer. Mm -hmm. So there we are. We're done. Now we can take our probe, go back to the main unit. That's right. So now we go back to the main unit, and we can see that this is a pretty good cable. It's, uh, 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 it's, a five, it's above a 5E cable. It's not quite a 6. And you can see that it's closer to the 6 than the 5E, so you know it's a pretty good cable. And, of course, we have PAST in big letters. Yeah. So you know right away that it's passed all the basic tests, and here we give you your speed. Or your cable category. Yeah, and the nice thing about it is it's a graphics output, so if the customer wants to see this, it's in a form where the customer can understand it. Now, you know, we should point out here that a lot of the early real-world certifier customers are now seeing a totally different tester. Uh, in the early days, they would have seen screen after screen of data prior to coming to the cable category screen. But to speed things up, what we've done now is we've bypassed all of that. We haven't shown it to the customer unless they want to see it. If they want to see it, they have the choice to review it or save it in memory. So it's a big difference for our early customers. All right, and that was an uh, input f uh, from our customers. Right. They said that, look, if it's just passed, that's what I need to know. Right. All right. Now, if the customer uh, wants to uh, uh, re review the data, he can. We allow him to review it, so he presses review, and the data is there. Sure. And then, he, you know, again, you, you see the screen where it gives you the cable type. It shows you that it's uh, capable of a, a, a gigabit, mm -hmm. and it's really good cable. So well, you can sure. see that it, it, it's, it's far beyond yeah. the, 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 thousand, uh, the, the spec for a th uh, minimum spec for a thousand. All right, this is a 50 foot cable, and the uh, delay is 76 nanoseconds. And the skew is 5 nanoseconds, which is the difference in delay between pairs. Well, you know at this point I always like to grab the tablet, don't I? Now, I know customers don't use this tablet too much because they, they store their uh, results in memory and they print it out when they get back to their office on their computer's printer. But what's handy about this tablet is you could follow the screens and fill out the data if you wanted to give your customer a quick takeaway receipt for the work that you did per cable. Here you would fill in cable category by filling in the graph. Uh, you would fill in the predicted speed, uh, the cable length. But here's where we're at right now, the delay in the skew. You show the delay of the cable at 76 nanoseconds. The tablet says you've got 555 to play with. So right away we know we have a pretty good cable. You show the skew at being at 5 nanoseconds, and of course the standard allows for 50. So right away we can start sensing we have a good cable. Yes, and if we were out of spec, the um, meter would have immediately flagged the error. Okay. So now let's continue with our review. And here is a summary of all the tests that were performed. It says the delay, which is the time it takes the data to travel from one end of the cable, is okay. The skew, which is the difference in delay between pairs, because data is sent on, all, uh, on several pairs at the same time, mm -hmm. and the data all has to arrive at the receiving unit at the same time. If there's too much difference in time between pairs, then some of the data is going to be lost and there will be errors. All right, the next, which is the near-end crosstalk, uh, is the crosstalk between pairs. In other words, you put a signal on one pair, and then you measure how much signal is on the other pair. And we do that digitally. And then on the uh, fixed, which is the far end crosstalk, we measure the crosstalk on, from one pair to another, but on the far end of the cable. Okay, we say the split pairs are okay. The map is okay. In other words, uh, it, it may be a straight through cable, or it might be crossover cable, but it's one of the accepted configurations. It's a patch cable, and the tolerance is 87%. In other words, it's 87% uh, over the minimum spec for this cable. And you know, for, uh, for uh, viewers that are, are worried about writing down all these notes, 
uh, they can simply open up their manual and we've attempted in the manual to have a glossary of terms as you see them appear on the screen. So we talk about, well, length, what does length mean? What is propagation delay? What is skew? So we invite you uh, to read through the manual at your convenience and especially